Mind's Eye Audio presents Power The Adventures of the Storyteller I think that identical twins are so fascinating. As a child, I remember wishing that I had a twin brother, one that would take all of my school exams for me, and whenever I got into trouble, he would be the one to take the blame. As I've gotten older and somewhat wiser, I've come to realize that things don't exactly work out that way. I've also learned that regardless of what we look like on the outside, it's what's on the inside that makes us who we are. This is a true story. Partially. I had lunch with an old friend recently, and we began reminiscing on the good old days. It didn't take long before the conversation moved to the subject of the twin boys that used to live across the street from me. So whatever happened to Robbie and Bobby? I asked. My friend leaned back in her chair and began catching me up on their story. These two boys were probably the most identical twins that there ever were. They were the same height, weight, wore their hair in the same style, and had no distinguishing marks on either of them. There was absolutely no way to tell them apart just by looking at them. Rumor has it that when they looked into a mirror, their reflections would get confused. But all you had to do was hang around them for a few minutes and it would be crystal clear which was which. The one identifying trait was their attitudes. In terms of personality, they were just like night and day. I don't know if something happened to them when they were younger or if they were just born that way. But Robbie was the kind of kid who was always smiling and in good spirits, while Bobby never smiled and if you took one drop of water from a full glass it now became 99 percent empty to him i remember when their dog died and robbie insisted that we have a funeral service robbie thanked god for allowing him to have so much fun time with fido and said that he was happy knowing that his dog was now in a safe and loving place meanwhile bobby who also loved the dog was angry with god for taking fido away I remember him saying, why didn't God just take that mangy stray dog that rummages through our alley at night? I guess everyone figured that Bobby would grow out of this phase, but I am told that this incident was indicative of a pattern that would define their respective characters. I was not surprised to hear that Robbie had done very well for himself. He was a very successful businessman with a happy family and many friends. When my friend told me Bobby's story, I was more saddened than surprised. Bobby, it seems, had never stayed at any one job longer than a year or two. He would see flaws in the company and then decide that he wasn't going to get far in that company anyway, so he never worked too hard. And since he never worked too hard, he never got far in that company. He applied this same self-defeating attitude to his marriage. He never really believed that his marriage was going to last, so he never really invested himself emotionally. And since he never gave his all to his wife, she began to feel that they weren't growing together. Beyond that, he didn't trust people in general, and I guess he accused her of being unfaithful one time too many, and she finally just gave up on the relationship. Bobby's doom and gloom attitude was somewhat of a people repellent. And this was fine with him since he really believed in his heart that the only person you can really count on in this world is yourself. As a result, he was a lonely man with few if any friends. As my friend reached the conclusion of the story, she withdrew a photograph from her pocket and handed it to me. It was a picture of two men. One man I quickly recognized as Robbie, the happy, always smiling twin, all grown up now. But who was the man standing next to him? I was sure that I had never seen this gaunt, grimacing person before. She said to me, Those are the twins, Drew Storyteller. This photo was taken a few months ago, right before Bobby died of cancer. We shared very few words after that, and then we hugged and said our goodbyes. I remained seated at the table we had shared as I watched my old friend exit the restaurant. My thoughts got the better of me as I considered just how powerful the human mind is. I thought about how we create our own realities and destinies. How we each have the power to choose the path that we will take and how those choices can affect us for a lifetime. I shed a tear for the memory of a lost friend. 
But when I really think about it, I could have shed that tear years ago.